Hi, I'm Mr. Dove, and welcome to Bio Lessons to Go, Genetics, the Science of Heredity. People have been trying to understand how traits are passed from parents to offspring for quite some time. Most people could deduce the fact that parents do pass on their traits to their offspring because offspring resemble parents. But how that occurs was a major question. In the early days, the idea was that traits were a blend of the parents' traits, um, kind of like two colors of paint mixing together to create a blend. Now this theory of inheritance was actually discredited by a scientist by the name of Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who studied plants. He was a botanist. Now because uh, he was studying plants, one of the things he was looking at was the traits of how traits were passed from one generation to the next. His work laid the foundations for our understanding of the fundamentals of genetics. Um, for this reason, Mendel is oftentimes referred to as the father of genetics. Now the focus of Mendel's work were the common garden pea. Now he probably chose to study garden peas because they were easy to grow and they're available in a lot of readily distinguishable varieties. Now most of us are familiar with you know green peas and most of the green peas that that we get in the grocery store um, they are you know they're nice and round and puffy um, but peas actually have a lot of very distinguishable traits. If we looked at their flower um, some of them the flower grows at the top um, another way that this is referred to as a terminal flower. Um, sometimes they grow on the side, which is referred to as an axial flower. Um, some stems, some of the pea plants grow really tall, while some grow short, sometimes referred to as a dwarf variety. Um, we've got our round peas, we've got wrinkled peas, green peas, even yellow peas. So there's a lot of very distinguishable characteristics um, that parent pea plants can pass on to their offspring. Now, in order for Mendel to work with pea plants and to exercise strict control over how the pea plants mated, he had to have a fundamental understanding of how flowering plants reproduce. Now, the main reproductive part of a flowering plant is the flower. When we look at the flower, um, it's going to have a male and a female portion. The stamen is our male portion of the flower and it produces the pollen. And the pistil is the female portion of our flower and it produces the egg. Pollen will fall from the, uh, the tips of the stamens called the anther onto the sticky stigma of the pistil. Um, the pollen then is going to be able to fertilize the eggs, which are down in the ovary of our flower. So reproduction in flowers occurs when pollen is transferred from the male part, the stamen, to the female part, the pistil of the flower. This is called pollination. Now there are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, pollen is going to be transferred from the stamen to the pistil in the same flower or in flowers of the same plant. And that's going to create purebred strains. So pollen is going to fall from the stamen onto the pistil of the same flower. They are self-pollinating, self-fertilizing. In that way, um, there's no recombination of genes. Um, it's the same parent, both male and female, in terms of um, the genetic complement. So this is going to create pure bred varieties. And so Mendel used this self-pollination to create pure bred strains. For example, he could create pure bred tall or pure bred short by allowing them to self-fertilize. He called these pure bred generations his P generation, P for parental varieties. Cross-pollination is when pollen from one flower stamen is transferred to the pistil of another flower. 
Mendel was able to use this technique to create crossbreeds. What he would do is he would remove um, the male part from one flower and then use um, a paintbrush or some people have said perhaps even the rear end of a, of a honeybee to be able to then pollinate um, from one flower to the next. Um, in doing this, um, he was able to ensure the parentage um, of his crosses. To make sure that no further pollination would take place, he would then cover his flowers um, with uh, little burlap sacks to make sure that they did not um, further um, encounter fertilization. So Mendel cross-pollinated his pea generations and then he looked at the traits that were inherited in the offspring. These offspring he called his F1 generation where F is, stands for filial which is Latin for sons. So this was like the first sons, the first children um, from that generation. So for example, he would take his purebred tall and cross that with his purebred short to see what would happen. Now if blending were taking place, a tall cross with short, you would get some sort of medium. But in this case, all of the pea plants were tall which told us that blending did not take place. And so what people were thinking for so long was incorrect. It was disproven from this experiment. Uh, traits don't blend. There were no medium plants. So Mendel was wondering, what happened to the short trait? Did it disappear? To test this, he crossed his F1 generation, his hybrid tall plants. To see what would happen. Surprisingly, in the second generation, the F2 generation, the short trait came back. So it didn't disappear after all. So based upon his observations, Mendel learned quite a bit and put together a few conclusions, which we call Mendel's principles. First, Mendel concluded that each individual um, carries two inheritable factors which today we call alleles for their traits. But you're only going to inherit one allele for each trait from each parent. In other words, each parent is going to give half of their genetic material to their offspring. What's really remarkable is Mendel was able to determine this not by understanding or knowing that chromosomes exist, but just through his mathematical deductions that it seemed like each parent was giving half of their traits to their offspring. Next, he deduced that some factors would actually mask or cover up other factors. That some alleles were actually dominant over others, and they would hide the expression of the weaker one, the recessive factor. Mendel ca called this his principle of dominance. So even though um, a hybrid tall has a short gene, um, it's going to look tall because the tall trait is going to mask or cover the recessive one. Lastly, Mendel figured out that blending did not take place. That instead, the alleles stayed separate and independent of each other um, and could segregate away from one another um, in the next generation. In other words, the hybrid tall, can, the hybrid tall plant can actually pass down um, that recessive short gene again to the next generation so that in the F2 we saw that the short trait came back. Now Mendel's conclusions are based largely on mathematical probability. In the early 20th century Reginald Punnett uh, created a diagram called the Punnett square that uses probability to show the possible outcomes of genetic crosses and really explain Mendel's observations. A Punnett square allows for us to observe how the genes from one parent and the genes from another parent are going to combine to create the potential outcomes of a cross. So for example, here we have a, a purple flower, hybrid purple, crossed with hybrid purple. And there are three out of four chances for you to get a purple flower and one out of four chances to achieve a white flower when these alleles combine. 
Now let's examine uh, some of Mendel's principles through the lens of a Punnett square. Let's begin with Mendel's principle of dominance. With Mendel's principle of dominance, we started off with a P generation, the pure bred generation, pure tall with pure short. Now in order to set up a Punnett square, the first thing you need are the genes of the parents. And so we know that pure tall has only tall genes and pure short only has short genes. To place them on the Punnett square, we separate those alleles because Mendel observed that each parent only gives one inheritable factor to their offspring. They get separated. You might remember that this separation will take place during meiosis. And so we separate the alleles. This happens for both parents. Then we're going to observe how those alleles combine. So what happens when this parent fertilizes with this parent? And we do that with each of the squares. So that way we end up with the potential outcomes. So what we have here is the genes that can be inherited by the offspring. We call that the genotype. Those are the genes that we inherit. So in this case, four out of four um, are heterozygous. They have one uh, dominant allele and one recessive allele. Um, and so we call this our genotype ratio. Now our genes also will provide us with our physical appearance. So if we have uh, a tall gene and a short gene, because of the principle of dominance, the tall is going to mask that short and we end up being tall. So every single one of the offspring are going to be tall. So our physical appearance, our phenotype ratio is four out of four tall, so 100% tall. So the offspring weren't medium because blending doesn't take place, but instead they were all tall because that tall trait masked that recessive short one and that's what showed up. The tall trait is dominant and that's Mendel's principle of dominance where one allele will mask or cover up the other. Now the other main principle that we can look at here is Mendel's principle of segregation. To observe segregation, we're going to start off with uh, two hybrid tall pea plants, two pea plants that are heterozygous for the tall trait. Once again, knowing their genes, we can then separate them. We can uh, allow for them to separate away from each other. And then they're going to reform in the offspring when they combine through fertilization. So the first square, we're going to get all tall genes. Then if we move to our next square, that's going to be one tall and one short. And then one tall and one short. And then lastly, two short alleles. So when we interpret this Punnett square, um, the genotype ratio is a little bit different because one is all tall, two have one tall and one short, and there's one that's pure short. So the genotype ratio is one quarter homozygous for the dominant, pure dominant, two quarters or 50% are heterozygous, and one quarter is pure homozygous recessive. Then when these genes give their physical appearance, if you have only tall genes, then you're going to be tall. If you have a tall and a short one, you're still going to be tall because remember, the tall mask the short. And then finally, if you only have short genes, the only thing you can be is short. So for our phenotype ratio, the physical appearance, we have three quarters that appear tall and one quarter, which is short. So the principle of segregation basically says that the genes will stay separate and they segregate away from each other um, and are able to recombine in the next generation. That our alleles are inheritable factors. They don't blend. They stay separate away from each other and can recombine during fertilization. So that's why our short plant can come back in the F2 generation because the short gene didn't blend with the tall. It stayed separate and was able to segregate away. 
So with Mendel's discoveries and Reginald Punnett's Punnett Square, we're really able to explore the fundamentals of genetics. From here, we're going to continue to build on these fundamentals. And we're going to uh, be looking at not only how single traits are inherited from parents to offspring, but how multiple traits are inherited from parents to offspring. And then we're going to go beyond Mendel and see how um, different ways that we can get our traits that Mendel could not have observed in his pea plants. So stay tuned.